analysing or, or looking at the key components of the breakdown, what are they? I just want to know what knowledge you've got. Okay? So, away you go. And then I'll ask you a short piece to get your little groups. Did you have your three there? Have a yarn. So, for me, peel the onion back a bit. I'll show you just a, just a simple warm-up primer drill that we do for attack. This is just the boys doing colour cone drills. Really important that you understand how to run, how to run and catch going straight. And that's the biggest issue that you've got with your attack. That's the biggest issue you've got if there's a problem of taking the ball into contact. Because a lot of big boys, particularly forwards, we, we bounce out with the pass. Someone passes to us, before we catch it, we jump sideways to catch it. Or our first step will be sideways. And that's what can bugger up your breakdown, right from the word go. Do you understand me there? So, the key things to attack is get set early. So what does that mean? Pardon? No, no, get set early. So what does that mean? Get yourself in a position to start with. So there's a breakdown over here, and you, you're getting to be, a, to be a ball carrier. Get there quickly so you can plant and get ready and get set. If you're still trying to get there and then get given a ball, the odds of you having a good outcome are limited. Are you with me? Yeah. So, get it. so it's a big thing to bounce, move your ass five metres, get to where you're meant to be. To get set early is your number one task. The next task is departure time. So what do I mean by that? You'll see it here. What's departure time? Holding the boot. Yeah. So yeah, but what does it mean? Yeah. So so we're not we're not we're all starting on the line here, aren't we? We're on the line. Then how do you get depth? Holding your run. Pardon? Holding your run. Hold your run. So. Departure time. They're all trains on the train station here. Which train goes first? Which train goes second? Which train goes third? Which train goes fourth? You, where we get into trouble, particularly with forwards, is I start cribbing. I don't know my departure time, so I start cribbing, and then I catch the ball on my shoulder. Now, the moment I catch the ball on my shoulder, the odds of me being a really good ball carrier for taking the ball into contact for the breakdown are limited. So get this part right. So... These boys go as soon as the guy on the inside of them go. Are you with me there? So don't underestimate this for the breakdown. So, we get set early, we have our departure time. First step is forward. You want, if you want the breakdown, first step is forward. Next thing, catch early. Now your four things for attack. So if you get those four things right, generally you'll find that the breakdown will flow on from that. Any questions on that? You're happy? Huge part of the game, boys. Huge part. And we don't spend much time discussing departure time. But that's what your attack lives and dies off, I think. Set early, departure time, first step forward, catch early. Okay. I'll just show you um, some stats. Because depending on who you coach or you're playing and you want to know how you go and how do you do it. Now some people have more um, things available, like I, I've got all the analysts, you know, all the opportunity. But just to show you what we analyse, and then you can start looking at it. So we, we this is after every test. This goes out to find more tests on the wall in the team room. So you look at say a guy like or take Aaron Smith, 83.3% of the time he accelerated in the contact out of six times. He had six times with the ball. So he did an 83.3. So that's average. 83.3, he got the weak shoulder, 7%. He fought to stay up. He's had a little bugger. So he'll probably want to drop and get behind him. What do you mean by weak shoulder? Okay. If I'm going to, if I get the ball and I can sell him to Mark Ely here, I don't want to go in and just T-bone him. What, why? Get held up. Held up or? Stripped. Stripped or? Yeah, I lose the collision. Unless he's a little bugger, you know what I mean? So I want to go straight at him and then just swerve at the last bit to accelerate to 
the, the outside of one shoulder or the other. That's a weak shoulder. That then gives me a really strong chance of winning the collision. So as long as I fight to stay up, that extra wee drive, and so long as I place it correctly, then that is a win to us. We win the collision. Generally, if the clean outers do their job right, we, we get lightning quick ball. Are you with me on that? Lightning quick ball is three seconds. So if you're analysing a game for the time you drop on the ground and, and the halfback is going to pass it, three seconds. That's what you call lightning quick ball. If it's not, it's slow ball. So that's how you can... I'm going a bit quick, just yell out here, boys. What's your pass mark there? I don't have it. See, a lot of teams say, oh, you want a 95, or you want this, you want 87, or whatever it is. I, just, I, I don't have one. I, all I know is, is that I look at, this is our big stats of the whole thing. I look at this, and I know what I'm going to coach, which is the most important thing. So if you look at, say, look at Sabrica down the bottom. See this here? First game of the World Cup. That game there. So... Did we accelerate into contact? 99% of the time we did. Our average for, for the World Cup was 96. So what it means is I get given the ball and I'm running at 20 k's an hour when I get the ball. When I, when I make contact with opposition, was I doing 30, 40, 50, 60 k? If I stole 20 k an hour, not good enough. The golden rule of, of breakdown, of born to contact, is you must accelerate into contact. That is the golden rule. So that's why we have it as number one. Did you accelerate? Did you get to a weak shoulder? 77% of the time we did. Did you fight to start? 97% we did. Did you long place the ball? 88%. Did we win our ruck ball? We won 100% of our ruck ball against Sarica in that game. Lightning quick ball, 37.1. That's down because we're normally 51, yeah? Now, then, this is a bit more, more mainly for you coaches. I wanted to know, so that's that top line, Sarica. I want to know, for the slow ball, why was it slow? Then we know what we can fix up, yeah? Why was it slow? So, slow unavailable was 51%, which means we've done it wrong of the slow ball. Half of it we did wrong, or they got amongst us. But half of it, 49%, was available. So we had it there. Why didn't we use it? So I want to know. So the reasons would be, halfback not passing, 14%. So that means he's got there, he's planted over it, and he's had a wee breather before he's passed. So that's slowed the ball down. Right? Uh, halfback, um, there's no halfback. So we've got a breakdown, we've won the ball and there's no bugger there. Don't matter who he is, we've got no one there, particularly the wide ruck, just to pick it up and, and move it. So that slowed the ball down. Um, then you go to slow available kicking, 52%. Now that's okay, because what's happened there is, well what does that mean? It's available. So, so yeah, so the halfback's setting it up, so what does he do normally? He waves the forwards in and they set a wall up and he box kicks. So in this game we box kicked a lot. So that's okay, that's, that, that stat doesn't worry me. At least I know why, the, why it was slow, you know what I mean? We've done it to ourselves, so I, that's okay. Not set, 24%. So Aaron Smith gets in, he's got no one to pass to. Because we're not set, we're not there quick enough. So 24%. Up is our pick and go, 0%. That's okay. Because quite often when you pick and go, it can slow up a bit. But I want explanations as to why the ball was slow. And you cut it and cut it and say, available, unavailable. Okay, out of the unavailable, because they got into us. Then I can go and say, what do we do wrong as a ball carrier? What do we do wrong as a support player? Is it our departure time way back here, or is it going into contact? Then I know from my 10 minutes of training on Tuesday, we're going to coach what's required, not something that you're good at. No. You, know, you know what I mean on that? Happy? No. So if I, if, I was, if I was coaching a team and I have no, no uh, video analysis at all, I would get, there'd be two things I would stat. And you can get an injured rugby player or you can get a parent. And the first stat would be, all I want is a tick or a cross, I don't need names. Did we accelerate into contact with the ball? Yes or no, just tick or cross. So at the end of the game, I can have a look at it and go, righto, I count the ticks, I count the crosses. 
silly. Okay? That's the, that would be the number one thing. The other thing I would stat with a ticker across was do we catch and pass correctly? That would be the two things I'd stat. And if you get those two things right, you'll have a good attack, attack game. Anything on that? You all clear on that? I got the ball and did I pass it to this other gentleman over here and he caught it correctly? So what if it's like in front or behind? Yeah, that's no good. No, it's just across. You don't need to know names because you haven't got time in the game and you haven't got the analysis. That's okay. You've got no video. Not a problem. Tick cross. As I said to you, look at the Crusaders Chiefs game of the weekend. It would probably be 25% uh, difference there in their skill level of catch pass. Quite often, the Chiefs are having to catch the ball on their shoulder. So then, you, you know, that, that's an issue for your attack. Then they start running sideways and shuffling shift, like they do. Mm. So that, okay. could be, that could be set early or could be the pass itself? It could be not right. set early. It could be your departure time's not quite right. You're cribbing. Mm. You know what I mean? Particularly big boys, big, big fellas, we crib. So when they're on the attack line and we're scared we're going to be slow, so we start cribbing. Yeah. Or we want to go, and what do they do? Their first step is back to go forward. Particularly front rowers, we do that. And all of a sudden, you're not in the right place where you need to be. So that's the finite stuff you look at for defence and attack. You big boys, you forwards. Did you go back to go forward, or did you just drop go forward? Why would I go back to go forward? What's causing me to do that? I'm, let's say I'm on a D-line or a tack line and I want to go and I push back to go forward. Why would I do it? Not set properly. Too flat. Yeah, what else? Too flat. No. Yeah, just something to do with your feet. We do it in the line out as well, some of us line out jumpers. Wrong foot forward? Uh, not the wrong foot forward. Scrum and kicking. Not quite. Balance. So, if you want to have a good attack line and particularly a good D line, we all come up as one. Uh, I guarantee you, your back three boys will be fine. It's your props and your big lock who will go back because they stand upright. So their centre of balance is here. So for them to go forward, the only way they can go forward is to step back to drive off that back leg. So the golden rule. You want your knee over your toe, chest over knee. So when I'm in this position here, whether I'm, I'm waiting to, to start on my attack or my D, I will always drive off my front leg. So just bear that in mind when you, every team will have two or three, four, five guys that go back to go forward. Okay? No, that can all change. You know, winning the collision is important. Winning the collision, that's the important thing. Yeah, I don't, we don't worry too much. Fozzie does a wee bit, you know. Do we, from the explosive strike move from set piece, did we get over the gain line? At what percentage? That, that's worth knowing. But as far as the breakdown is concerned for me, it's just did we do it correctly? Again, I go back to uh, even look at the game yesterday if you watched it. You know, run, catch, pass is what we live and die for in New Zealand. There's a lot of examples in yesterday's game was catch, run, pass. So the difference there is I'm standing static and I catch the ball, then I try and generate momentum. That's, that's rubbish. In New Zealand we operate off run, catch, pass. Even if it's just a wee bit of movement for you big boys, there has to be some form of movement. Okay? Well, 
No, he, well, he was woeful to start with. But we, we, what he did get good at through, through perseverance was he got very good in the middle of the field being a tip runner. Because he got one job to do and he did that job very well. Yeah. He got his timing right. He always had his good timing and got his good wow. aim. Yeah, he used to catch it so probably. Yeah, they're dead right. Yeah. Mate, yeah, the ball. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Hoover. Yeah. I agree with you. Um, so you're all clear on that, what you can do for your team? Or if you're a player and you've got some form of video analysis, you say, I might have a quick look at my breakdown work. What I'm asking you to do is, if you're not quite sure, think, peel the onion one layer further back, and was I set correctly? Did I depart correctly? Look at that area. It'll fix up a lot of your problems. Okay, do you understand those other terminologies, fight and start, long place, all that? You know, no issues there? You okay? Mark asked me... Um, some questions. Uh, advice on time spent on the breakdown in a week of two practices. For me, once you explain, I'm going to take you out very shortly and put you through some drills and activities. Once your whole team knows what is good technique, you, you only need to say, I, I don't need. Well, for us, what we do is we do, um, we might have four stations. One will be a breakdown station, one will be a catch pass station, one will be a defense station. You know what I mean? Every three minutes, blow the whistle, move around one. So I'd run the breakdown station. So we do that twice a week. So you're only talking three minutes at each station, So because they know what they're doing. And we're working on a certain area that we need to fix up. And then you have 20 minutes of individual skills before every training. And in that time, the players, if they knew they needed to tidy up a few little things, they'd tidy it up there. So that's all. You don't need to spend long, as long as you, as long as you know what you're working on. Um, intensity, uh, for me, I'll show you clips here of us doing clean out drills. This is the intensity uh, I would encourage. demonstration, Sam Kane, Artie Sevilla, just winning the race to get under the chest. That's a wee bit illegal now, but <laughs> when we play England or France it won't be. So just, the law, the law can change. Um, so we just do that set, you're feeling your body. Where do you get your power from? Pardon? Feet. Let feet. You get the power from the ground, <laughs> through your feet, through your legs, through your body, into an opponent. The tackle, breakdown, more, scrum. All power comes from the ground. So, you've got to feel yourself in these situations, feel where your power is. If you're just hitting it at 100 miles an hour, you've got no idea about your body. So, get to understand your body better. Is that okay? So, that answer intensity. You'll probably get a bit in your team run if you've got a bit of live opposition. Because for us, we go 35 minutes live, full noise on a Thursday afternoon. 15 on 15. So we get our intensity there. Um, decision making at the breakdown. Stay out or go in and choice of target. That's what would be your answer there. Well, this is a breakdown, uh, yeah, yeah, we, we don't want to spend too many bullets, but uh, it's our ball, we want to keep it. So generally, yes, generally it's ball carrier plus two, and then the third, the third guy coming is a decision maker, generally, is that okay? So long as everyone does their job right, we can get away with that. Happy on that? Um, as far as um, number four, many many uh, high school players wait until their team ball carry goes to ground before looking to clean out or bridge. They often ball watch <coughs> rather than assessing threats. So what's your answer there? We could uh, latch off to them, give them momentum going forward. <coughs> yeah, we used to do that. Strong carry. Highlanders do it for certain things. No one else really does it unless you're trying to go for a, a try, a, a goal line try. So why would we change it now? Why would we... 
as I said, only the Highlanders do it out in, when they just want to set up a crack rack and go with only one clean outer. What's the downside to it? What's the downside? When the ball carrier goes to ground, he's, um, he's likely to have the opponent all over him, even though he's been driven from behind. So it's sort of lead to slow ball. Yeah. Hard, to, hard to fight to stay up. When we go to ground, there's lots of legs there for the, the half pack to clear the ball. Um, and generally the ball carrier start, you know, he gets latched on and you actually push him over and he and then just goes to there. So what we prefer is, um, I'll show you, uh, pub fight, I'll show you the pub fight. This, this is uh, pub fight. So in comes Anton Leonard Brown, takes out their guy. Let the ball carrier do the ball carrier's role. Just watch it again. You're not worried about the ball carrier. Just get rid of the shit around the ball carrier and let the ball carrier <coughs> place the ball. Questions? Happy? Okay. Next one. Um, Often rolls around each uh, breakdown are unclear and so comms are poor to the ball carrier. So what, what sort of comms would a ball carrier want to hear? Fight. Fight? Anything else? If, um, so if there's sporting players coming for the defence, what, go to ground? Go to ground, yep, yep, Long yep. Plays. I'm with you, whatever. Left or right. Yep, good as gold. Pop. Yep. You know, so, so get that going. Advice around counter rucking. When would you counter ruck? Identify a weak ruck. Pardon? If you identify the weak ruck. Like weak ruck? What's a weak ruck look like? Um, isolation. Isolation, what else? Poor body position. Yeah. What's a, what, a, what, would, what would be the picture you're looking at? Someone pretty much standing up and up. Start out or they're or the, the like this, yeah. two of them. But for me, I think you don't need a key word like a, a blitz. Yeah. So the two guys, our two guys, one of them yells blitz or the nine could, we go in there and we just whack it, rather than individual. You know what I mean? Yeah. At least have some form of a, of a code or a call that we know we're going to blitz it. We've seen enough, we're going to be able to counter -rate. Does that answer that? Yeah. Do, you, do you have any activity to go counter -rate for? Yeah, sure. And you can set that up. Remember at training, when you're doing something, try and always include decision making. Don't just do an activity. Don't do a draw without decision making as a rule. So you can have, tell the opposition, <coughs> we're doing this activity, sometimes you'll be really strong, sometimes be a bit vulnerable. And we'll have to see the change in picture and react to the change in picture. That's be how I'd do it. Um, taking out an opposition, do you just take him out or would you rather put him to ground? And if you do, how would you want to end it? On top. On top. So if you take him out, land on top. Bounce, go, get set, you're off again. Good boy, well done. Um, this here, Mark asked me about the coaching box that I showed you the other day. This would be my coaching box for um, a breakdown. Box one, is your, <coughs> box one is your first day, you've got them. Box four is the end, so accelerate, weak shoulder, fight to start placement. We're going to do that when we go out here very shortly. Running lines, I've already shown you some clips on, on that and covered that. <coughs> Decision making, balance and height. What's balance and height? Uh, like what your foot work, your feet are doing and like how low, low to the ground you are. Okay, so a lot of guys, tall guys, when they go into contact, they'll get taller rather than shorter. What would you rather than that? Get taller rather than shorter. But a lot will get taller. What happens when I get taller, a big tall guy, and I go into contact, and I hit, and I, and I come up? You'll just get held into it. You'll get, well, against good ones, you're gone. <laughs> the odds of me winning that collision are very slim. So remember, when you're just going into contact, just get a fraction shorter rather than taller. With me? Mike, just to, on, a, on a swing of that, a lot of young kids that are taller find that contact, and it becomes really easy for them to go to get out the ground too quick. That's because, if you imagine it's a seesaw, your body is a seesaw for balance. So there's the, you know, your, your, your little seesaw. So what happens with taller guys, or people who have no confidence when they're running with the ball, they end up like this. 
So they get a, a, a heck of a lot of their body leaning this way. So when they make contact, they're aiming about on that white dot down there. That's what they're aiming. And generally, that, it's a bad thing. You've got to get that out of him. Because he's got these far too far back from the contact point. We have two contact points in rugby, gentlemen. Uh, breakdown, tackle, maul, scrum, clean out. Two contact points of our body. What are they? Shoulders and feet. So, here's the shoulders, here's your feet. If they get too far apart, you fall over. And that's what I'm trying to explain about a tall guy or a person who's just hitting the ground all the time. If I'm too close together, I've got no power. Happy? It's quite a big issue in teenage rugby. Pardon? It's quite a big issue in teenage rugby. You see it and they just... Because some kids are so advanced in their body. Teach them how... I, all I'd be doing them was getting them to, say, lean against a hip pad, feel the ground, feel their power through their feet, and generate into a pad slightly and catch up, and just take them through that, feel where the power comes from. Now take your feet a bit further back, now drive me and he can't, so, you know, and just get them to feel it, take them through quietly. Um, so that's your height, Rob a support player. I'll give this copy to Mark, but this is worth doing. Ozzy McLean did this for us. Um, it's bloody good actually, have a read of that. So, this, so I'm running with the ball and you guys are outside me, yeah? So this is what you, this is, these are your decisions. You've got to be lateral because you're waiting for a pass, aren't you? Sorry, you can't see that. Okay. So while, while he's running, uh, you're, you're a support player, you're, you're, you're pretty lateral waiting for a pass, yeah? Number two, as soon as the ball carrier starts to go into contact, so he tucks, that changes. So what do you do next? You boys can't see that, so what do you reckon? You're a lateral player, you're there, I've got the ball, you're outside me, I tuck, I'm going into contact. What do you do next? You think? What are you going to do? Support, so you'll change your line a wee bit. Waste of time you being out here, because you're going to run past me when I go into contact. Is that okay? So, then what you're after is you're looking for an offload. Then you're looking for a pop, because you want to try and get the game going. Okay? And then, then if there's no pop, and it's just a simple tackle, pick the ball up and go. There's no one else there, wouldn't you? If there is some people there, identify the threat and clean them out. So they are all the decisions that we have to do as a support player. If you've got players who run past the breakdown, then it's a telltale sign that they're not, they're not reading the picture quick enough so you can help them with the changing picture. Is that okay? Right. Uh, so... Mark wanted me just to show one clip. I think I've got one here I'll show you. That um, puts it all together. This is just a simplistic sort of <coughs> up until we go. So this just goes for about three or four phases. We just watch, accelerate. So you've got a static, accelerate, place, accelerate, fight to stay up. Rito gets it, drives with his legs after being taken. Sam Kane the same. We're a bit static there. The punch time is not good, but it's enough to get there. So that's just a typical game. But every one of them, they did accelerate to go into contact. Quick clean out, placement, we get quick ball. Is that okay? I've covered a heck of a lot here, boys, in a short period of time. But have you got any questions on any of that? How can you see the 
reports now saying that that acceleration and moving forward, a lot of them will catch, step, and then move forward. You can tend to be, I think, at least um, somebody was there, one of the, one of the locks. So rather than just sort of busting that, certainly having a look up to obviously go to that shoulder, you're obviously looking yeah. at that. Uh, so I guess it's training that as the acceleration not be all on catching the ball and running straight. It's catching the ball first, assessing. Yeah, just remember, if you sidestep, you slow up. Mm. If you sidestep, you slow up. So if you're going into a short contact point, swerve, accelerate to swerve into that shoulder rather than, rather than sidestep it. Are you with me there? Because you'll lose, you'll lose your drive. Mm. Happy? So what? just yell out, what's one or two things that you've picked up you think, shit, I'll run with that? Just yell them out. Acceleration. Yep, good boy. Passing. Passing. Set up. Set, set early. No backward step. No backward step. You, do, you boys do uh, uh, yo-yos? Yep. Okay. You go and watch a yo-yo. And if you just film the pe people's feet, uh, half of your type forwards will step back to go forward when the buzzer goes. <coughs> Your wings and fullback will never step back to go forward. They'll always go off the front leg because they know the fastest way. So you can tell by your players and you can fix them pretty quick. What else? Departure time. Pardon? Departure time. Departure time. Huge. Huge. I, I think. Weak shoulder. Yeah, get that weak shoulder. Don't T-bone. You want to T-bone as a tackler. You want to get your weak shoulder as a... And I'll give you... I'll show you one drill here that if you want to bar up on it uh, before we go outside. Give me a big, you're injured, I'm saying. You're injured? Yeah, off your cap. Um, this is a great drill if you want to get accelerate, fight to start, and also get good defence. So here's the line, and we stand half a metre off it. So we're a metre apart, yeah? You line up all your boys. And I've got a ball. And when I go, I'm either going to go there, to that shoulder, or I'm going to go there. And my job is to get as far as I can over the white line before I get taken to ground. Your job is to get me as far back over here and put me to ground as far back over there. So you can use, if you want, half tackle suits, the upper body ones. Bloody good. So when I go, I go and I'm fighting, because if I don't fight, you kill me. And you're learning your defence because you don't know where I'm going, so I'm just here, I'm here square and i just got to go. Yeah. So you, you're learning that acceleration, you're learning weak shoulder, fight to start and eventually I'll place it. Depends where it is on the white line. If it's over this side you win, that side I win. But I've got to get as far as I can and you're going to take me as far that way. So it's a great little drill. Thanks very much. Bit of, bit of, <laughs> bit of bloody dander gets up and uh, you're learning a lot from it. Is that okay? Yeah. Is that where you would have a bit of intensity and aggression in that? Oh, you could, yeah, unfortunately, that, well, not unfortunately, fortunately that one is full noise. Full noise, eh? But you're only a metre apart. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about it. And it's a really simplistic drill to say, well, you've got to do 60 seconds of it, that's all. When you do activities or drills, don't hammer them, for me. Spray and walk away. Mm -hmm. Teach them, walk away. Following the training, come back to it again. They'll be better for it. We bit more, walk away, come back to it again the following training, and they'll get better, 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 better. Mm. Rather that than being 20 minutes on one subject and their intensity levels go, their attention levels drop. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to go outside and just put some boys, are these are the boys here, are they? Yes. We've got five designated boys here. Yep. Six. So you boys go out and get you some uh, boots on, could you? And I'll be straight yeah. out there. Okay, we'll go outside. Great, thanks, Mike. Just face me, boys. Out here, face me, boys. Let's go. Straight back up, you ready? That's up, jog, 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 jog. When I do that, down on your guts, roll that way and bounce up, you ready? Jog, jog, up, 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 up. Straight down. Up. One more, keep going. When I do this, run past me. Come back to the starting line. So we do that. Get your whole team on the goal line. 
and you'll see the boys that don't know how to lift their hips to get off the ground, but very quickly you boys will get a lot better, won't you? Yeah? Yeah. You ready? Let's go again. One more. Ready? Quickly. No, that's slow. Come on. Get, get going. Down. Go, go, go. Up, up, up. Okay. We're back to go forward, see? So there's a, there's a wee activity you can do for teaching them how to bounce a bit quicker to get set quicker to set up your breakdown work. Right, acceleration. So give it to this gentleman here, please. Can we have a ball, please, for this gentleman? So, you're going to be stand upright, this ball. So watch this, boys. Come around here, boys, so you can see me. You boys from behind. My elbows are absolutely locked. You, you feel safe, eh? Safe? His, his hips are forward. All his weight is in my hands, yeah? I'm going to squeeze and get out of the way and you accelerate five metres. You ready? Where you go. Grab a ball, you boys with the boots on. This ball. No, you're bending. Ball. That's better. Now I'm going to take you. Push your hips forward. Hips forward. Keep your legs locked. All the weights in here. You ready? Okay. Well, have we go. <coughs> So this is for acceleration? Acceleration. Yep. So they... they got to get their feet. they got to get their feet. Next, do the same thing. So now, same thing. You're going to accelerate and just swerve past this guy. You just do nothing. When you get really good, bring them lower. You with me? You ready? Bang. Where you go, groups of three. Accelerate, you add him and then just slide past his shoulders. You step. As soon as you step. Pardon? Oh, we'd get through a lot of this sort of yeah. stuff in three years. Once you know what you're doing, yeah. you're good to go. Here's the feet. Assuming three feet at the top. Because we are three on two. Yeah, I'll hold you. Here's the hind end. You ready? I'll bring you down a bit because you're good. You ready? You're better. Okay. So that's your um, accelerate, accelerate to weak shoulder, yeah? Next fight to stay up. So you're like this. So you're going to get a partner, it's a, it's a hard draw for this gentleman. Put my chest on your back and push down. You're going to slowly take me five metres, but you're not going to stand up. You can't stand up, you keep same height. Okay? No, stood up. You stood up. Okay, slowly. Yep, way go. That's it. Slowly, slow. Yep. Okay, so where you go. So what we're teaching there, it's a prick of a drill. It's awful for the guy underneath. And uh, but he's learning how to fight to start and keep his legs under his body. So if you get one who, the tall boy that you're talking about, who falls over all the time, you know, you put more pressure on him. So you'll learn to keep them there. Now we'll do placement. Maybe a voice of the crowd. Three types of placement on your knees. Give them the ball, please. Partner, hold his ankles. Partner, let's score the point. Back around. Middle. Back around. Middle. Non stop. Score the try. Around. Back to me. Other side. Back to me. Back to starting point. Start again. This time, same thing. Pass. Ready? Go. Bang. 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 Change over. Okay. One up back by the toes. A lot of young guys don't know how to use their hips. So where they land, they'll just place the ball. They won't work their body around. 
This is educate them through their hips. Back to your feet, to your toes, way back to your toes. That's hitting you around your shin. I need it back to your toes. Toes. That's it. See the difference there? Get the ball away from the feet. Okay, Meg? Uh, lie here on your stomach, please. Your partner is hooked. Yep. Can you lie across his hamstrings there, please? Yep. Now, this is harder. Same drill. You keep all the weight on him. Same drill. Ready? Yep, go when you want. Go. No, no, he'll, you keep on his hamstrings. Yeah. So he's going to keep you there. You keep, keep there. And just use this part. Okay, ready, go. Yeah, middle, far side, middle, far side, and back. Where you go. Lot tougher. Lot tougher because sometimes when you land, you're in the wrong spot, but you, they, they want the ball there. And you've got to have the ability to, to use this part. see uh, this happen about three, four, five times a game, but quite often it leads, it can lead to a bloody really good attack. Geordie Barrett's probably the best uh, in New Zealand at it. It's, it's out when you get, you're running and it's in open spaces. So what you're going to do is you want, is it, you're going to score a try, break my, break my grip, and get all the way back around. Okay, on your knees, where's your partner? Just hold his ankles about 50%. Okay. Just score the try, all the way around, all the way around and there. So now nine's coming or whoever and it's just there, there's not a leg. So you boys practice that. So they need to, if you can get your boys to have the understanding that in open spaces we could end up doing that sort of placement, it's gold for your attack. I guess there's a little bit more traffic around the, the ball generally, particularly if you're support players Correct. Are here, you're trying to, I guess it's, yeah. So but Geordie does it probably every time he goes into contact, he's trying to do that. He needs a pretty big circumference too. Uh, yeah, yeah. Where's the whole sideline? Where's the whole sideline when you do that? Is it at his feet? Yeah, yeah, at his feet. Yep. Yeah. But, but he's turned now, the HR way back here. Yeah. As I said, England, France, at Six Nations next year, we'll look nothing like what we're playing. <laughs> Guaranteed. So now we'll put it all together. So your partner comes in. Hold, no, sorry. Ben, you're going to hold him. You've got five metres. Do, 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 do. When you're ready, down, place, you try and touch the ball. Lead it, you know, stay your side. You hold him down, yep. big fella. Push down. OK, slowly, five metres. No, no, no. You're falling, falling. I want you to keep control. Keep control. Okay? Keep control. Keep control. Yeah, when you're ready. Yep. Now place and then try and touch the ball calm. You with me? Away you go, boys. So now we put it all together. So in coaching, you give them little modules, little parts of something. And then we put it all together rather than do it all in one go. So, any questions there on accelerate, weak shoulder, fight to start, placement? Any questions? You're pretty clear? Anything different to what you normally do, coach? Yep, a lot of it. A lot of it? <laughs> well, you can see what we're trying to do though? Yeah. The big thing is you're after the three second ball. Look after the ball. Okay, and if, you, if your breakdown's not working well, you know, nine times out of ten it'll be your ball carrier. What do, you, yep. what, what do you do when the player breaks? And so you can take from this support players. Support players, yep. Yes, you break quite a distance. You do anything different with it in terms of how he holds the ball or, or stand up a little, stay up a little bit longer? Or yeah, well, <coughs> when, when can a ball carrier stay up a bit longer? When do you want him to stay up? Isolated. Isolated. 
Yeah. You know, and you saw it at the weekend with Cody Taylor. He went, he picked and go, and he thought, shit, I'm by myself here. And you can see him sort of slow motion do it because he's just he's holding up time for, for support players to come. I guess if you're doing that drive and you take the contact and you're in a good position, you can still drive while your support players are coming. Yeah. Still That's moving. it. Yeah, just like keep stay moving, up. but stay up. Not, yeah. Correct. Not, not hit and drop. <clears throat> And then the boys come in and clean out the pub fight, get rid of the... So conversely, on defence, if someone's doing that and they are isolated, you probably want to get them on the ground so you can have a crack at the ball Correct. before the sport post comes. Yeah, then, then they're buggered by law. Yeah. Okay, clean out. We'll just do that for you. So if you have a... Um, just a ball on the ground there, another partner, yeah. just on the ground, on your stomach, boys. Or we'll just have the ball there. When I say go up, you're going to try and jackal. You clean out under the, under the chest. Okay? Ready? Go. Yeah, that's it. Where you go, in pairs. Just get underneath the chest. Just call yourselves. Sorry, mate. Get under the chest. No, you're on top. Tall boys want to go on top. <laughs> boys have got no confidence going top. So boys, your first breakdown, you always want to try and get under, yeah? You agree there? If you can, get under. Now, I'll show you a really good drill. Um, Two boys, come down here, please. So, this is for teaching how you clean out, because it's quite awkward to get under a chest, because you've got to come down, and then try and keep your feet without falling over. Yeah? So if you just lie on your stomach here, please, face that way. When I say go, up, here, you have to hit here first, hit there, then into here, grab and drive back in. Okay? You ready? Yeah, a brace. Ready, go. Hit the bottom one. So you hit the top one first, it's okay. Do it again. Hit that one first and ricochet. Mm. So it's an awkward drill, it's an awful drill. It feels bloody awful. Go. Because he's coming down in a position that's quite hard, but quite often that's the position we go in for clean-outs. So there's a good little activity for you, yeah? Happy? Right, I'll put you through a circuit. So we have one guy here, please, holding the hip pad. Oh, one guy here, please, anyone? Lying on your stomach on it. One guy here, please, with a ball, check one. One here, please. This one here, so you're, you're the jackpot. Oh, no, I'm, I'm on that side. You're leaning over. Boys, this one here is going to be late coming at you. So this guy I've got to clean out, he's coming late, and I've got a body on the ground. And as he walks, I've got to step over and clean him out. With me? I don't ready. Who we got doing the work? Yep. He's doing all four. He's doing all four. So if you've got a big squad, you have two of these set up and have them going through one after the other. Dave. Oh. Yep. Quickly. Jackal, get right over it so he's got to jackal you. Okay, go. No, 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 no. Go back. Don't, don't lift the lead. Just punch it. Soft fuck way out. It's okay, it's on the side. Yeah. Front on, whack him. That's it. Clean him out. Get rid of the jackler. Hit and twist. Twist. Okay, and here he comes, he's coming at you. 
Next one. One's down the feet. The other side of the feet. Oh, I think here on this one here is a bit tough to swim. Yeah, yeah, that one's more easy. Yep, yep. Just Good. Use your legs. There, so he's squashed. <laughs> yeah. That last guy, make sure he has to step up. He's tackling you, cleaning you out with one leg over it. Okay. You ready? Go. Unbreak. Yep. Moving. Get right over the jackal so he's got to jackal you. Okay, you got rid of you. Okay. Just go through one after the other, and you can have bloody 12 people on this one and 12 on the other one. Boards, backs, everyone doing it. And you can have coaches just watching on each one, or an injured player can be a coach on one of them to help out. When you do the jackal, can you just go into the jackal, please? Give him the ball. Get right over it. Get your chest, yeah, head right on the ball. There's no way I can get under it. So how do we jack how do we get rid of it? Yeah, so what part of our body is most important? Good boy. Good boy. These are just an extension of your power. Power comes from this part. So when you get, it's a twist, it's a, like a corkscrew. And you're using your hips and your legs to rip and roll him out. Is that alright? Do you want to stay there? Do you want to demonstrate for me, please? Just quietly, don't do kill him. <laughs> okay, that's it. One last thing I want to show you. Can um, you hang on to the ball, please? Yep, you hang on to the ball. No, just the ball. Just, uh, just, just hang on to the ball over here. Okay. So, we're getting a wee bit of choke tackles as well going on. So, ball carry goes in, and we're trying to keep him up. Okay, we can keep him up without a knee going to the ground. It's a ball, ball turnover stunt. So we, a lot of guys don't know how to get to ground. So it's an area I think we have to educate our young guys how to get there when you know you're in the ship. Get the knee down. Okay, so you come over here, please. So this is a good little drill. <coughs> you come in and get your best grip on him. Your best grip. And you're going to keep him up. You've got to get to ground. Just see what you do. Yeah. Yep, again. And this time, try and go that way. Um, yep, that's it, that's it, that's it. Okay, the big thing is, is don't just try and drop straight down, you got me? That happens. So you've got to, get, you've got to teach them some form of forward, forward movement, forward movement. Rip the shoulder, rip the leg, then you've got some chance of getting down. Don't just try and drop straight down. Yeah, you two boys have a crack, come over here. Yeah, big nuts. Here's a book. <laughs> <laughs> you got him, big fella? Yeah, got him. Got your best, no, no. You start here. You get your best grip, big fella. Okay, when you're ready. That's it, that's it. <laughs> so, now that's, that's going to happen a lot in the game, yeah? So we have to educate them. You got him? Yep, get him up. So, the biggest thing is your first movement is down and forward. Mm. You've got to get you've got to get him on his heels. Because we're like boxers or martial arts. Once you're on the heels, we're buggered. So do it again. You get a wee grip. Drop and come forward. Come forward with your shoulders. Don't get taller. Okay, yeah. see what you want to do? You've got taller. So you can want to do. So here, drop power. Then you're in this position. So if they're getting taller, I'm bugging. One more for you. Okay, drop the power. There you go. Now rip the shoulder. There you go. So as coaches, we have to educate our players in that. <coughs> I think it's going to be more and more choke power. Heavy? Right, come on in. Come on in, you fellas. So that's our little hour session, our five. So just chucking the learning pot here. Just chuck out anything you've learned today. 
any drilling activity you, you can remember, just or anything that we discussed, just fill the learning pot up. Where we go? Acceleration contact. contact. Number one golden rule. Go forward, not back. Balance. Balance. Weak shoulder. Weak shoulder. Feeling where the power comes from. Where the power comes from. And we don't teach players that. Yeah. You know, what if you're a boxer? It all comes from the ground. Mm -hmm. you know? What else? Catch pass. Catch pass. Catch pass. Because there's an attack cage. You know? But you can just see the importance of it, how mm. it infiltrates. It has such a huge influence on our breakdown. We're, we're good catch passes. You can get a hiding up front and win 30% of the ball. If you can catch pass, accelerate the contact, get lightning quick ball, you can put some teams under the sword, yeah? What else? Set early. Be ready early, set early. Set early, good boy. So that little drill there is good. Don't what get else? Taller. Pardon? Don't get taller. Don't get taller. Yeah, big boys will see that. Want to do that? Then you bug it. What else? For the drill, have someone like on top of your back, peak and drive forward to five meters. Yeah, it's a hard one to learn how to teach that, how to fight to stay up. It's a bloody hard thing to teach. So that's that's the only way we've found that you can do it. That. What else with the? Uh, what happened about the clean out? Under chest if you can. That's your number one go. Yeah. What's next? Hips, hips and legs like a corkscrew if you're gonna, particularly if you're gonna, that or replacement, it's all from your hips. Yep, anything else? You all picked up something? So when you talk about breakdown as a coach, just think of now, I hope they'll give you enough there to think what part of the breakdown. Is it before we even go into contact? Well, well back. Is it when we go into contact? And if so, who's the problem? Is it ball carrier? If so, what is it? If not, support players. Then you can identify it and coach it. I mean, nip it in the bud. You don't need too much time. You just don't, once you teach your players this sort of key components, what part of this will be pouring on Saturday? Oh, that one coach. Well, let's go and nail that. Happy? Yeah. 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 Everything you do, it seems to be it's mirrored with your attack. So when you're, you're doing that breakdown, you also the players are learning that the opposition are trying to do the same thing. Yep. So if, if you see guys getting really low, well, how do we deal with the opposition without getting lower than us? So everything's always mirrored. Yep. So even if you're teaching one thing, it's Correct. actually because you've always been thinking the other way on the other side as well. Yeah, it did bloody right. So I think those drills are awesome where you're teaching both sides of it. And even that one there we were holding up, you know, like. I'm learning how to hold you up, and you're learning how to get down. Yeah, yeah. So I like where you're getting benefit for benefit. Yeah. But you can see a lot of them today trying to hold up, you get the turnover more, so it's going to be, I think it's going to get more prevalent. So we've got to teach the players how to use that hold, that, that, that motion there. Well, the question, why, why did you get held up in the first place too? You know, how did you get yourself... You got taller going in, that's wrong. Well, or you might have got two guys going in at him at once, you yeah. just got him. Then you're in the ship, you know. We've got, to, we've got to have the ability, the tools in the toolbox, to get that knee down, or the body down if we can. I know you use the mirror mic, but there's a lot of drills without the pants, isn't there? It's people on people, yep. getting, getting contact, yep. shoulders on. Shoulders on, and um, slow it down. Just slow it down, you don't have to do pull of the gate, just feel your body, feel where your power comes from. You know, get it ready for Saturday. You know, so it's, it's just, See, if, if you just went a thousand miles an hour here, you'd just there'd be bodies everywhere, but you, your accuracy or your knowledge would, would be, you wouldn't be gaining it. So you're better off slowing it down and feeling it. Feel where your power comes from. Feel how you move a body. Far better. If you ever go and have the opportunity to see top martial arts people work, that's how they do it. They'll spend a bloody day just doing that, trying to tip something, you know. They're just yeah, feeling it. also for like kids, if you're doing eight, nine, and ten, Started getting this stuff, yeah, being really slow. Yeah, well, real slow. Real scared. Slow motion. Everything you do is slow motion. Then you can say, right, we'll just speed it up a fraction, 30%, 50%. Just let them play. Get them to feel their body. Okay, how do you boys find the uh, NFL drill? <laughs> With what? The, the 
Yeah, yeah. 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 So there's, there's a little primer, if you like, to get them ready to, to, to get off their ass when you go into a team run or something and get into the position quicker, you know. And, and you're using your hips to bounce all the time. So it's an area that we have to help the boys on, a lot of the boys' hips. Sweet. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. That's me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I think all